Hi everyone. Welcome back. In today's video, we are going to solve polynomial congruences of higher degree using Hensel's lemma. But before we begin, let's see the general method of solving such polynomial congruences. In general, polynomial is written as f of x. Here, we will be using a particular case where our modulus is p to the power k. So, if we are asked to solve a polynomial congruence, fx is congruent to 0 mod of p to the power k, we will use the fact that any solution which satisfies fx is congruent to 0 mod p to the power k will also satisfy fx is congruent to 0 mod of p. So, we start by solving this congruence and whatever solution we get, we lift that to modulus p to the power k. This will be better explained using an example. What if we are asked to solve x cubed minus 2x plus 1 is congruent to 0 mod of 5 square? You can see here p is 5. We take p to be some prime integer. Now, this is our fx. So, we start by taking modulus 5 and we will look for its solutions. You will get two solutions. One is x is equal to 1 and the other is x is equal to 2. Now, how did we get that? We looked for the residues of mod 5. You know the residues will be 1, 2, 3 and 4. We substitute and see which ones satisfy this congruent. So, here x is congruent to 1 mod 5. And x is congruent to 2 mod 5 with the two solutions. We can always write it as x is equal to 1 plus 5t. And this one we can write it as x is equal to 2 plus 5t. T takes different values. Now here I've used the same parameter t but you can always use t here and u here. Now to the first case where x is congruent to 1 mod 5. So we start with this first solution. Substitute x is equal to 1 plus 5t in your original congruence. Now here, on substituting, we get, and when we simplify, we get 125t cubed plus 75t square plus 5t is congruent to 0 mod of 5 square. You see that 125 and 75, both are congruent to 0 mod of 5 square. That is 25. So, they reduce to 0. We are left with 5t is congruent to 0 mod of 5 square. And this gives us t is congruent to 0 mod of 5. Now, this tells us 3 is a multiple of 5. So, we write it as t is equal to 5 is. Substitute this t in your x is equal to 1 plus 5t. You will get your solution as x is equal to 1 plus 25s where s takes d is different values and that's the solution. Let's take the second case where our solution was x is congruent to 2 mod 5 and we'll substitute x is equal to 2 plus 5t in our original congruence and this on simplifying and using the same fact that your 125 and 150 both are and also 50 they're all congruent to 0 we have no t to solve. So such a congruency, this congruence is not satisfied. So such a congruence does not have a solution when x is congruent to 2 mod 5. So going back, we will see that only one solution for such a polynomial congruence exists and that is 1 plus 25s. Now coming to our Hensel's lemma. What does the lemma state and how do we use it? So the lemma states, given fx a polynomial with integer coefficients, and let's say that we have to find the solution of fx is congruent to 0 mod p to the power k. If x0 is a solution of fx is congruent to 0 mod of p to the power k minus 1, that is, it's a solution of the same polynomial with modulus p to the power 1 power less. Then there are three cases which arise. The first thing we check is the derivative of our polynomial. 
if that is not congruent to 0 mod of p, mind you, it is mod of p, then there exists a unique t. Now, this is some integer t such that the solution x0 plus t p to the power k minus 1 gives us congruent to 0 mod of p to the power k. And t value you will see will lie always between 0 and p. So, it is greater than equal to 0, less than equal to p. Sometimes you might get t value as because t is substituted in this formula. It might be negative, but we see it's positive congruence. So, what exactly is t then? t is nothing but minus u f of x net upon t to the power k minus 1, where u is the inverse of derivative at x naught. So, this was the first case. We will see this in examples and it would be better explained. Take the second case when the derivative is not congruent to 0. But you see that function when x naught is satisfied gives us congruence to 0 mod p to the power k. In such a case, x naught plus t p to the power k minus 1 is the solution for all t. And the last case, our derivative is again congruent to 0 mod of p, but my function is not congruent to 0 mod of p to the power k. Obviously, when it is not satisfying the congruence, original congruence, there will be no solution. Let's come to some examples. Here, in this example, we are asked to solve x cubed minus 2x plus 1 is congruent to 0 mod of 5 square. Now, this is the example which we had solved. I'll just go back. We had solved using our general method. Now, you will see that so much of work is reduced when we use Hensel's lemma. So, it's the same example. Now, we are given fx is x cubed minus 2x plus 1 and when we differentiate fx, we get 3x square minus 2. We have just differentiated this. So, when we start with modulus 5, our congruence x cubed minus 2x plus 1 is congruent to 0 mod 5 gives us two solutions 1 and 2, which you saw earlier also. I've written them again here. We'll start with x is congruent to 1 mod 5. Now we are using Hensel's lemma. So, I take x naught to be 1 and we find f at 1. We see that it gives us 0. Substitute 1, you'll see that it reduces to 0. So, this is congruent to 0 mod 5. And how about the derivative? The derivative gives us 1, which is not congruent to 0 mod 5. So, which case are we on? We are on the first case. Our derivative is not congruent to 0 mod 5. So, we will now move on to finding the t for the solution. So, what we do is, we will, we know that t is found using minus u f1 upon f at x0 upon p to the power your k minus 1. So, we will find the first. u, of course, is the inverse of the derivative. In our case, our derivative came out to be 1. So, the inverse of f dash 1 will also be 1, but here we don't use it because f of 1 is 0. So, you see that is equal to minus u f1 upon 5 also reduces to 0 because this was 0. So, f1 is 0. And our solution will be straight away x is equal to 1 plus 5 square k where k takes all these different values. Now, we have saved substitution in the polynomial and we directly get the answer. Let's come to the second case where x was congruent to 2 mod 5. Now, we take x naught to be 2. You see that this is the solution. So, when we substitute in a function, we get 5, which is not congruent to 0 mod of 5 square. And a derivative at 2 comes out to be 10, which is congruent to 0 mod 5. So, in this case, we have the third case. 
a derivative is becoming congruent to 0 mod 5, but the polynomial function at 2 is not congruent to 0 mod of 5 square. So there is no solution. So the same question has been solved so easily. Let's move on to a higher power. What if we are asked to solve x4 minus 2x square minus 3 is congruent to 0 mod of 5 cube. Now here the derivative is 4x cube minus 4x. We'll start with x4 minus 2x square minus 3 is congruent to 0 mod of 5. Again, you'll be getting two solutions for such a congruence. And I'll repeat, we check all the residues of mod 5. We'll substitute them here and see what satisfies and they will be the solution. So here, x is congruent to 2 mod 5 and x is congruent to 3 mod 5 are the two solutions. Let's start with x is congruent to 2 mod 5. So we'll take our initial solution x not to be 2. The function at 2 is 5 which is congruent to 0 mod 5. And the derivative of fx, here we found the derivative. When 2 is substituted, it comes out to be 24, which is congruent to 4 mod of 5. So it's not congruent to 0 mod 5. So it's the first case. And we get the solution from x is equal to x0 plus tp to the power k minus 1. x0 is 2. We just write here as it is. And 5 to the power, because here our power was 5 cube. So we are starting with our first step, so it will be 5. Now how do we find t? t is nothing but minus u f2 upon 5. u will be the inverse of the derivative. So here you see that f of 2 is 5. So this 5 upon 5 cancels and you are left with minus 2. Let's see what is the inverse of f dash 2. We can see it is 4. You can find that. And when we substitute, t comes out to be minus 4. So the solution will be x0, which is 2, t, which is minus 4, into p, which is 5 to the power 2 minus 1, which is 5. So we get this as minus 18, or that is congruent to 7 mod of 25. So first step is over. We have two steps because our power is 3. In the second step, this solution which we found in step 1 becomes our starting value. So now the x0 is 7. When we substitute it in the function, function value comes out to be 2300, which is congruent to 0 mod of 5 square. And the derivative at 7 comes out to be congruent to 4, which is not congruent to 0. So again, the first case, so all we have to do is find our t. For t, we find by finding the inverse u. u comes out to be 4. f7 is 2300 divided by 25. So that gives us x is equal to 7 minus 4 into 92, which is minus 368. And that's congruent to 57 mod of 125. So for the first case, we've got the solution. If you ever have a doubt, you can substitute 57 in our original polynomial and see that that will be satisfied. Come to the second case where your x was 3. So we take x0 to be 3. We find function value, which is congruent to 0 mod 5. We find the derivative, which is again 1 and not congruent to 0 mod 5. So the solution is nothing but x is equal to x0 plus t, p to the power k minus 1. Here we have this as 3 plus uh, into 5. Here we find from minus u, f of 3 upon 5. u we find and use the inverse of f dash which comes out to be 1. So t value will be minus 12. Now, when we substitute everything in our x is equal to x0 plus t, p to the power k minus 1, we get the solution as minus 57, which is congruent to minus 7 mod of 25. So this was our first step. For the second step, now this becomes the starting solution. 
F at minus 7 will be 2300, which is congruent to 0 mod 25. And F dash at minus 7 is congruent to 1 mod of 5. So, when we find T value and substitute, our solution will be congruent to 68 mod of 125. The calculations you can always check. Now, so whenever we have the first case of Hensel's lemma, this corollary is quite useful. So let us see what this corollary is. So let x not be a solution of fx is congruent to 0 mod p. And the derivative at x not is not congruent to 0 mod p. Then there will always be a unique solution xk mod of p to the power k k values lying between, you know, greater than 2 and greater than equal to 2. That is, you take values 2, 3, 4, etc. Then the solution is given by xk is xk minus 1 minus f xk minus 1 u. Where again, u is nothing but the inverse of the derivative f dash x naught mod of p. So, here this is an iterative method and it is very, very useful. Now, see, we are referring to this, uh, you know, case, Hensel's lemma. The first case, whenever you find that the derivative is not congruent to 0 and your function is congruent to 0, then mod of p, then we can use this method, this corollary. So, coming to the example. Here, we have taken 2x cubed plus 7x minus 4 is congruent to 0 mod of 5 cube. There will be only one solution for fx is congruent to 0 mod p, which is x0 is equal to 1. So, all we do is we will find f at x0, which is 5. We will find the derivative at x0, which is 13 and not congruent to 0. So, this is the first case from Hensel's lemma. We will come to the iterative formula which says I am taking k to be 1. So, x1 is equal to x0 minus f at x0 into u. We use the inverse. So, we substituted x0 is 1 minus the value of function at x0 which was 5 and u. We find u which comes out to be 2. So, my solution is minus 9. But we still have to do one more step because our power is 5 to the power 3. In the second step, we take our starting value minus 9. That is x1 is equal to minus 9. Take k to be your 2 now. So x2 will be x1 minus f of x1 into u. We substitute all the values. Find the function at minus 9. You will see this is the value we get the answer as 41. And you can check it satisfies. So, corollary comes quite handy when our first case of Hensel's lemma holds. Now, let's look at one example when solution exists for all t. So, what if we have a problem where we have to solve x square plus x plus 7 is congruent to 0 mod of t square. So, we'll start with your x square plus x plus 7 is congruent to 0 mod of 3. And we see x is equal to 1 is the only solution. So, when we find the function value at 1, we get 9 which is congruent to 0 mod of 9. And f dash at 1 is 3 which is congruent to 0 mod of 3. So, this is the second case from Hensel's lemma. The function value is congruent to 0 mod of p to the power of k. And derivative is congruent to 0 mod of p. Solution x is equal to x0 plus t p to the power k minus 1 will hold for all t. In our case, it will be 1 plus 3t for different values of t. And solution, because see, this is a quadratic. So, there will be two incongruent solutions. If I take t to be uh, 0, we get 1. When I take t to be 1, we get the value of x as 4. So, there are two incongruent solutions of this polynomial. Last example, let's see 
an example where no solution exists and we cannot use Hensel's lemma. So if we are asked to solve x cubed plus 2x plus 1 is congruent to 0 mod of 5 square, we'll start with x cubed plus 2x plus 1 is congruent to 0 mod 5. Now this has no solution we can check by taking different residues of mod 5. So we cannot lift it to, the solution cannot be lifted to next stage. So there is no solution. Thank you for watching. And in the next video, we will see how primitive roots are used for solving higher degree polynomials. Thank you for watching.